mail back time, we've got a bunch of stuff here, several packages, so we'll go through them. Always do the biggest one last, you know the rules. As usual, there'll be links down below for anything I can give you links for. It's a little tubular post. I don't remember ordering these. These test point posts, maybe? I, I, In the mystery, I, I don't know. I honestly don't remember what these are for. Check out the link down below and maybe you'll find out because. Mm. Mm hmm. At least it's still intact. This is a glue. Expires in 12 months. That's fine. Instructions. You've got the word instructions in English, but all the instructions are in Chinese. Anyway, I believe this is needed for these. So I ordered some stuff to repair some speakers. I've got the replacements around, because the original ones are torn. So I've got some replacements for those, which should fit. I haven't actually done a test fit yet, but they should fit. And I ordered a couple of different glues. This will be one of them. This might be a black glue. I think it's like a black colour. So when you glue it, it will actually you know blend in a bit. I think that's what it is anyway. I won't know until I open it. But I'll probably do a video on that, doing a speaker repair. Could be interesting. Header pins. So what I've always done traditionally is purchase like a 40 pin row of header pins and then just cut them off as I've needed. And I've been building some stuff recently, it's been a bit annoying having to cut them up and try and tidy the ends up and make it look nice and that sort of stuff. I decided to finally buy some proper length ones. So these ones are 15 pins. So are these. So two lots of 15 pins. There are 20 lots of 15 pin headers here. So 15 pin is the one I shall use quite a lot of because I use them on the ESP32 dev kit V1. I use that for a lot of my projects. It's just a convenient microcontroller to use because it's got lots of features on it and it's very configurable. So I use that and it's got two rows of 15 pins. So I use these headers to basically connect things up because I have them as a plug-in module rather than a mounted module. So yeah, I finally did it. I went to open one of the bags up just now and it's full of bags. So that would be a mail bag in itself. Maybe this is the one I was thinking of. This is black glue. Non-hardening adhesive. This might be the one I was thinking of. So these are for that potentially as well. Three of them. They're all the same. Just some of the packages can open all of them. Like I said, I will be doing that speaker repair and hopefully do a video about it. 80 mil. Yeah. Hopefully that'll work. So I recently upgraded my computer to a new computer. I've been using a 2010 Mac Pro for a while. Before that I was using a 2008 Mac Pro. And I've now been using a 2013 Mac Pro. And I've had to do a lot of work to transition the system over to this newer computer. I mean, it's still an old computer. It's still a 10-year-old machine. I can at least run like the latest version of OBS and the latest version of DaVinci Resolve and that sort of stuff. It's certainly more powerful. It's now encoding videos twice as fast as the old machine did. So that's pretty good. Well, it's almost twice as fast. It's, it's pretty close to it. But I needed to have another hard drive enclosure. It's only got one hard drive bay, right? It's a M2 type card. It's a little SSD built in. There's no internal storage otherwise. Now my 2010 Mac Pro, I've got four drive bays in there, plus a PCI drive as well. And the PCI one was doing the SSD, the main system drive, because it's faster. And then I had four drive bays as well, and I had like internal backups drives and stuff like that, and external storage and... I needed some more drive enclosures to about move these drives from my old machine into an external case, which is what I've got these for, to use one new machine. So these are supposed to be USB 3 drives. <laughs> That's nice. I bought them locally. Still even using them plug in there. Nice. I think it's a standard 12 volt supply anyway. But USB 3 cable. 
it's dry, if I guess that'll just slide off for it. Yep. It'll fit a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch starter drive in there, which is all I need. Um, I was just trying to find something quick. I needed something urgently so I could get this stuff set up and working and get myself back in operation again. Plastic cases, you know, it's a bit of a trade-off. I'm really surprised that it didn't come with a local adapter though. Since I bought them locally. But it's 12 volt, 2 amps, you know, it's common supply rails, uh, positive center. So yeah, it's not a big deal to change it. Or even just want to use a death adapter on it. I probably would just change it out for a different one though. So now we've got this Amazon box. Now I'm a bit worried about this one because it's not very well sealed. This side's half off. This side is not too bad, but it's damaged. The bottom side is completely open, like this. And like this. So I'm really hoping that nothing fell out, because you can see right through the box. You can actually see into the box. So I'm hoping nothing fell out of it. Not good, is it? Our phone radios. Let's go through this and make sure everything is supposed to be here. Actually, is here. It appears they will be here at least. So, let's start with this one. Got earpieces for them, antennas for them, charging bases, batteries which feel really light. <laughs> the actual radio, power cables, but that's not the right plug, but never mind. I wasn't too worried about that. So these are the BF AAAS. How's that go? Is that clipping? Yes, it does. Put an antenna on there before we power it up. Power on. There we go. 15, 15, 14, 13, 12, 9, 3, 1, 7, 1. Okay, that works. Um, got a speaker, microphone, socket on here. This side got a PTT button. We've got two other things which are squirrel tropen and torch. LED thing. I don't know why you'd really want that. Anyway, so that seems to work. That one does anyway. So I just say it's charging bases for them, so these can drop into these chargers like so. But these have got US plugs on them. What are these rated for? These are AC 110 to 240 volts and they have a DC 5 volt output apparently. It doesn't weigh very much. Anyway, okay, so that's that pack. That seems good. It all seems to be there. So I got these radios because I need to use these at events. There's an event coming up, which is a big event, and I need to have a way of communicating with the various staff that work at the event. Normally I always walk around and go and see people and that sort of stuff and, and you know, out and about and just check in with them and that sort of thing. If things go wrong they will send someone to come and get me or, or something like that. But the event I'm going to be doing this year is quite a big one and it's going to be hard to do it that way. And I was thinking I need to get some radios and I can use some radios at the event. Now what I'm going to do is program these radios to be low power output because they're only going to be short range a few hundred meters. I don't need much range at all so I'm going to set them to low power output and set them to channels which are less of a problem hopefully. Try and keep them out of harm's way <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. But That's the plan. Let's see what's inside one of these. Okay so that's another two pack. Well, they've got two different sorts of packaging, that's weird. That's got a programming cable with it as well, that's right. Doesn't need a programming cable, so I can program them. Same chargers, yeah, 500 milliamp chargers. It's strange the way it's got different packaging. These has got belt clips as well, so that's probably why. Yep, same radios. So, um, yeah, that's looking promising. But it's, it all appears to be here at least, so that's a good thing. Another project for me later on. Configure all these things, get them all set up in a way which will be non disruptive to other people because radio stuff is always tricky. Because these sorts of things, when you get these kinds of radios, the frequencies they're on usually aren't appropriate for the country they go to, so I need to actually adjust these and make them so they don't interfere with other people as much as possible. And say, produce the power puts right down as low as I'll go, and that sort of stuff. 
I do know they've got low and high power settings, so I'll be setting them to low settings and choosing frequencies which aren't disruptive to other people. Yeah, 400 megahertz, 470 megahertz will cover. So, um, yeah, but you have to program them. You can't just turn them on and use them, really. You have to actually program them first before you try and do that. Otherwise, you could be transmitting out a band. You don't want that. Check out the videos down below. Loads more of our videos. I've got to record two more today. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel. Help me to buy things like marginally illegal radios. Bye.